afternoon. We are calling to order the Board of Hamilton County Commissioners regular meeting, March 2nd, 2023. Can't believe we're already in March. <laughs> At this time, we'll ask for a silent prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, I make a motion to approve the Minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Somero Dumas? Yes. Okay. We have some uh, presentations today and a uh, couple proclamations. We will start with the proclamation in honor of World Teen Mental Health Wellness Day and, um, and the goal of improving youth mental health. This is presented by the Hamilton County Commission on Women and Girls and the girls uh, appointed members, Jill Miller and Kenzie Sullivan. Welcome. Thank you for having me today. Um, I believe Kenzie, did she make it? No, she didn't make it. She was maybe tied up at school today. So um, it's such a privilege to be with you today. As you all know, we have a youth mental health crisis um, on a national level, but also we feel it locally here. Um, you can no look no further than Cincinnati Children's and how they're diverting ch um, children who need help, as well as community-based organizations who have stopped their wait lists because the demand is so great. And so the Commission on Women and Girls made youth mental health one of its priority areas. And so this year, uh, we um, ask all of you to proclaim March 2nd as World Teen Mental Wellness Day here in Hamilton County. And in celebration of this day and to get more students involved, um, the commission teamed up with BI3 to give grants to local high schools to support activities like wellness rooms, um, yoga, bringing in speakers. Some students are having lunch with their counselors today to really reduce the stigma and update them on the resources that are available to them both within their school and the community. So this is our first year, and we hope that many teens will, will take to social media today and share their favorite wellness activities um, and make this a day that we can build on year after year. Thank you, and I want to thank you and the work of the Commission on Women and Girls and uh, Mary Maui for bringing this forward. Uh, I will ask, before we do the resolution, I would like to ask uh, Vice President Driehaus, who is the founder of the Commission on Women and Girls, if she'd like to say yeah, anything. Thank you, and thank you, Jill, for being here. Thanks, Rebecca's here as well from the Commission on Women and Girls, and Kinsey must gotten gotten stuck at school, of all things. Um, so uh, thank you both for being here, and of course, Mary Mounty for putting this all together. Um, this was and has been a priority of the Commission on Women and Girls since the inception in 2017. We heard from the girls at that time about how mental wellness uh, was something that they were concerned about. Mental health was something they were challenged by. And one girl in particular came in and talked about her sister who suffered from uh, a mental health uh, or a mental illness and um, said that we would be surprised to how many girls were struggling with this. And I, I think we continue to be surprised at how many youth are struggling with this. So um, especially as COVID has impacted now our youth in such a dramatic way. And so um, thank you to BI3 for putting out the grants to encourage high schools, uh, boys and girls high schools, to participate in just taking a minute, 
recognizing that this is an issue that we all deal with, uh, reducing the stigma related to mental health issues, and then providing a grant so that they could do activities, whatever they define to be the appropriate activity in their high school. Um, I know this is the first year. I don't know how many years will go, but it, it was ex it's exciting. Jill, could you tell us how many schools participated in the So we don't know how many of our 52 high schools in Hamilton County are participating. We know that 11 sought out grant funds to host various activities, but that doesn't mean that there are uh, not other local schools that didn't apply for a grant that are also bringing awareness to this day. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you, Rebecca, for doing this work for the last two years as well. So that, that's all I have, but uh, really grateful for the recognition. Thank you. Thank you, and I want to uh, join in uh, thanking Vice President Driaus bringing the grants to our attention and uh, the administration getting it out on our website. And uh, BI3, thank you for doing the grants. And just the last two weeks, uh, we have been passing grant dollars uh, from the county for uh, to um, fight teen suicide. So I uh, just wanted to, to highlight it has all of us working together. And thank you so much with this public-private partnership. Commissioner Dumas, before we do the uh, yes. proclamation. Thank you, you like Madam Chair. Um, this is certainly an order to acknowledge the Teen Mental Health uh, Day. And I think about social media and how impactful it is. So it does some great things, but it does some other things that makes uh, not only the females, but the males try to reach standards that they can't reach. And so this will be very helpful. The grants will be, be very helpful to let you know that social media is just that and not try to meet those standards that they put in place. So thank you so much. Thank you. And now for the proclamation. Proclamation recognizing March 2023 as women's um, do I have the right? Different one. I got the wrong one. Okay, here we go. Proclamation in honor of World Teen Mental Wellness Awareness Day 2023. Whereas World Teen Mental Wellness Day is observed across the globe annually on March 2nd to raise awareness for the mental health issues that teenagers face every day and to educate the destigmatize and destigmatize something that is being increasingly common. And whereas one in five U.S. teenagers are actively suffering from a mental health issue, and whereas the U.S. Surgeon General issued an advisory declaring youth mental health as an urgent public health issue. And whereas the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, American Academy of Pediatrics and Children's Hospital Association declared a national state of emergency in children's mental health. And whereas this year, the Hamilton County Commission on Women and Girls is asking all Hamilton County high school students to join students around the globe in participating in World Teen Mental Wellness Day on March 2nd. And whereas the Hamilton County Commission on Women and Girls teamed up with BI3 to provide high schools with up to $500 per school to plan, create, and lead World Teen Mental Wellness Day activities that engage fellow students and whereas, as of February 23rd, 2023, the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners has approved three grants totaling 516,700 in American Rescue Plan Act funding to support teen suicide and prevention uh, days. And whereas, of February 23rd, 2023, the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners has allocated 1.5 million in American Rescue Plan Act funding to support youth resiliency. And whereas the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners has awarded 5 million in American Rescue Plan Act funding to the Mental Health Recovery Services Board to expand the mobile crisis unit to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week in Hamilton County. And whereas the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners has allocated 250,000 from the Children's Services Levy for the Beyond Your Imagination grant program to provide positive cultural experiences and interactions for foster care or children otherwise in the care of job and family services. And whereas the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is a national network of local crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support 
to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the United States. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners that March 2nd, 2023 is recognized as World Teen Mental Wellness Day in all of Hamilton County. Now, we'll come around to present the official proclamation. We have another proclamation, and um, this proclamation is, uh, I think, more than a proclamation. We talk about the historic nature of uh, three women, Hamilton County, first ever to be three elected women here in Hamilton County. Um, so um, makes it more than a proclamation. This proclamation recognizes March 2023 as Women's History Month. Whereas women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of Hamilton County in countless recorded and unrecorded ways. And whereas women have played and continue to play a critical economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere by constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside of the home. Whereas women make up much of the workforce and service sectors and are employed as frontline workers in occupations such as community and social services, education, training, and library, health care practitioners, health care support, office and administrative support, and personal and services personal care and services, and only make, get this, 82 cents for every dollar a man makes. And whereas the number of women is growing in additional sectors such as business, engineering, information technology, banking, law, governance, medicine, planning and development, and others where their influence is creating positive change, and whereas women have played a unique role throughout our history in Hamilton, in Hamilton County and throughout the nation by providing much of the volunteer labor force in our community, and whereas women are particularly important in the establishment of early charitable, philanthropic, and cultural institutions in Hamilton County, and whereas American women have served our country courageously in the military. And whereas American women have been leaders in securing their own rights of suffrage and in equal opportunity, the abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement and peace movement, and diversity, equity, inclusion movement, in which all cases create a more fair and just society for all. And whereas despite these contributions, the role of American women in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching and study of American history. And whereas Hamilton County enjoys more women in elected office now more than ever in our county's history, particularly in the county level in Hamilton County, whereas Hamilton County recognizes and encourages the study, observance, and celebration of the vital role of women in American history, and as a gesture of celebration, desires to recognize Women's History Month. 
Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, Hamilton County hereby designates the entire month of March as Women's History Month, calling upon the people of Hamilton County to observe March as Women's History Month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, activities, and action. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, does hereby proclaim March 2023 as Women's History Month in all of Hamilton County. You can see women clapping all over Hamilton County right now. <laughs> yes, right. So we have a proclamation, as we've just read for this one too, but um, we have an official ceremony on March 7th. Um, all the women throughout Hamilton County at all levels of government have been invited, all, all elected women have been invited for a photo um, so that we can memorialize how many women are serving in Hamilton County at this time. And so that's March 7th at four o'clock on the courthouse steps. We will um, have this proclamation for that ceremony so that we can remind everybody about the importance of Women's History Month. And my understanding is that Mary Mounty has done research and can verify that Hamilton County has more women elected officials than any other county in the state of Ohio. So um, I think it's evidenced here on the dais. Uh, in particular, it's kind of highlighted, um, but we've got many women serving, serving not only countywide offices, but also in the townships, in the small cities, in the villages, on Cincinnati City Council. Women have, um, have been serving in these roles for a number of years, but our numbers are growing. So I think it's an important um, time to recognize and remind young girls that they too could be elected officials if they so choose. Um, and, and that uh, there are plenty of women examples throughout the county to lead them down that path. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And some people say, well, we've got women now. We just got here. <laughs> we just got here. Uh, so um, it would be a good example for women and the young girls for the future. Uh, Commissioner Dumas, do you have something on this? Uh, I understand there was a presentation. Was there a presentation? Sure. Okay. I'm sorry. I saw proclamations. I apologize. If you come down here, I'll let you do the presentation. You sure? Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. We have another. Oh, he made it. We have another proclamation. This proclamation is for Lincoln Ware. Uh, Lincoln celebrated 50 years uh, yesterday, or this week. This month. This month being on uh, radio. So i like to read this proclamation. Proclamation celebrating Lincoln Ware for 50 years in radio. And anybody knows radio, that's very, very difficult to do. Where is Lincoln Ware, also known as the voice of black Cincinnati, was born and raised here in Cincinnati and is a proud graduate of Woodward High School. <laughs> That's my rival school. I love Woodward, though. Prior to beginning his radio career, Lincoln attended The Ohio State University for one year and subsequently enlisted into the United States Marine Corps. As a Marine, he was a member of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. And whereas in 1973, Lincoln Ware officially began his radio career when he joined the staff of 1480 WCIN as a disc jockey. In 1978, he joined WPBF radio station in Middletown. In the 1980s, Ware worked at 700 WLW doing weekend shows. A lot of people probably didn't know that. <laughs> he then returned to WCIN, and by 1993, Lincoln was hosting the Lincoln Ware show. The first Black Daily talk show where his famous phrase, I got it, on that station. In 2000, Lincoln left WCIN and joined Blue Chip Broadcasting, which was acquired by Radio One, Urban One, in 2001, and has remained in the radio chair ever since. Whereas Lincoln Ware is the host of Cincinnati Issues with Lincoln Ware, 
a TV show airing on WSTR Channel 64 every Sunday at 6.30 a.m. In addition to this, Lincoln Ware continues to make appearances nationally on CNN and MSNBC and Sirius XM Radio. Lincoln also covers, also serves on a number of boards and committees, including the volunteer chair of the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame and on the Finley Market Board. Whereas Lincoln Ware has received numerous accolades and awards, including America's Top 100 Talk Show Host for 10 consecutive years, being he, uh, being he was named one of America's most important radio talk show hosts by Talkers Magazine, receiving a key to the city of Cincinnati to commemorate his 30-year radio career in 2003, Crime Stopper of the Year Media Award in 2016, Men of Honor in 2018, and UC Health Humanitarian Award in 2020, as well as the 2022 Urban League of Greater, Greater Southwest Ohio Glory Lions Award. This year marks Lincoln Ware's 50th year in radio. Whereas Lincoln Ware has a strong commitment to the community and media, his wife Sharon and four children, Daryl, known as Chip, Rodney, Tamiko, and Tia, and his three grand and his grandchildren, Kobe, Isis, Maya, and then his dog, Bo, <laughs> <laughs> continue to be his number one priority. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners does hereby recognize and celebrate the contributions of Lincoln Ware as the longest serving African American in radio with this year's commemorative 50 years. Be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County does hereby proclaim the third day of March, tomorrow, as Lincoln Ware Day in all of Hamilton County. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, thanks. <laughs> and I got to add this. When I came home, well, growing up, he was a producer of my father's show, and I was a little kid, and I had to go there on Sundays. And I would tell my mother, why I gotta go down there? It's so boring. <laughs> Two of them are boring. And she would say, on down there with Lincoln and your daddy. <laughs> and I would listen to all the community issues, and I was like seven years old. And then to come home from Grambling, and being on radio down there, and then coming here, I was his producer. He said, I'm gonna start this talk show no one has ever done it, a daily black talk show. And we had no money, and I worked at WCIN. They paid me $500 a month, <laughs> and boy, I thought I was rich. And uh, we were able to work on the show. But to just see Lincoln and be close up and see all the people that respected him all over the country and the big interviews and all of the artists, you broke in a lot of these records. People were begging you, please play my song. And they would go on to be big time. So. Just wanted to uh, thank you for everything that you do. Before you say anything, we do have others who want to say something. Vice President, Commissioner, uh, President, Vice President uh, Denise Drias. Hello, Lincoln. Uh, congratulations. I didn't know 50 years. I'm not going to ask you how old you are, but <laughs> you must be pretty old. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you're older than I am. I know. Uh -oh. I started when I was a little uh -oh. baby. I started the radio when I was a baby. I just, I just had a birthday, a big birthday, and I, all I know is that you're older than I am. So I'm, I'm glad of that. So, um, no, I, you know, look, you have, you're a landmark, or, or, or you've created um, a lot of history in this community. What you've done uh, in the black community in particular has really been amazing and important, I think. Um, and so the, the voice that you lend and the voice that you allow people to have in this community is really important. And so you are a generous person. I've been uh, on the receiving end of your generosity. I've participated in your program a couple times and um, really appreciate that opportunity to talk about countywide issues and then listen to what your listeners have to say and their response to what we're doing. So I'm really grateful for the work that you're doing, that you're continuing to do it at your old age uh, is remarkable. Lincoln. Uh, so uh, again, thank you on behalf of the county and congratulations on 50 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Commissioner Dumas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hello. How are you? Um, I just think you're awesome um, that um, people know that they can come to you and you can give a voice to them 
for things that are going on in the community and that you uh, are, don't have that allegiance to really anyone. And when they bring an issue, uh, you're going to find it out and, and check it out. And I was listening to the 50 years as an African-American uh, radio host, but uh, aren't you? I mean, who has more time, black or white? No one. Uh, well, well, all. maybe Jim Scott, maybe, because he was already on the air when I started at WCIN. Okay. But little. he's been out of the radio business for like maybe three years. So I don't know. I'd have to check with him to find out how many years he was actually in. Yeah. But uh, it, it would be kind of close. A yeah, Jim, sure. yeah, just a few, yes. Yeah, so Jim I, Scott, maybe Jerry Thomas yeah. might be in there also. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you so much for what you're doing for this community. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I would just like to say, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the people listening to me. If you have no listeners, you have no show. Right. So I want to thank everybody who have listened to me over the years. I run into people. Uh, I used to, they, they look as old as I am, but they say, I used to listen to you when I was a little kid. <laughs> you know, and so I said, man, I, maybe Denise is right. I am old. <laughs> But I want to thank you, commissioners, for uh, giving me this presentation. I appreciate it. And like I said, to all the listeners, and uh, when I first started back in 1973, uh, you know, it's been a long haul. I knew uh, Steve Reese and Alicia, and I would like to think my show helped to ca catapult her onto her political career because after she left my show, she became a city council member. <laughs> so there you go. So, uh, but I'd like to thank everybody once again for giving me this mm -hmm. honor and give me my flowers while I'm still living. That's what I say. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we forgot to say he's in, uh, we're going to present this, so don't go anywhere, but you forgot to say you also participated in the Senior Olympics. You went to yes, the Nationals. Yes, yes, Up until I had my knee replacement, and I think I'm done now with the mm -hmm. senior. You're going to retire now. <laughs> I'm done. And I want to also recognize his lovely wife, Sharon Ware, is here with us as well. Without her, I wouldn't have made the 50 years of radio. <laughs> so we'll come around and take a picture with you. Okay, we want to, uh, Kenzie has arrived and uh, 
Vice President Driehaus would like to say something. Yeah, I just want to recognize that uh, we did a presentation earlier. Kinsey was um, on her way from school to here. So Kinsey Solomon has joined us. She is a member of the Commission on Women and Girls. Um, she goes to St. Ursula and was the champion of Im implementing the Teen Wellness Day at Ursula High School. So thank you, Kenzie. Thank you to all the your um, colleagues over at Ursula that were part of this day. We really appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, one more. Or is this, no, is that it? Okay, all right. We will move to comments. Uh, anyone here would like to, two minutes. Has anybody filled out a card? There are no public comments. Okay. All right, anybody on Zoom? No. No one on Zoom, great. Okay, uh, we'll move to comments um, from the commissioners and uh, we'll start with you, uh, Vice President Drios. Thank you. Um, just a couple of things. First of all, is he still here? Did he move? Where did Troy go? I, Tro Troy Miller was here. I was going to, there he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, Troy, Troy, they've been looking Troy, for Troy, I'm you. saying something about you. Oh. So <laughs> You might want to go back out the no, door. I'm no, I'm just saying, kidding. I'm just so Troy is the new government relations person over at SORTA. Uh, you may recognize him as the president of the ATU in his former career, which ended like a week ago. Um, so anyway, Troy is the new face of SORTA here at the meeting. So I did want to recognize that he's in the peanut gallery, but he's at our meeting. Thanks, Troy, for being here. Looking yeah, that's right. Looking forward Welcome. to working with you. Um, I delivered a proclamation at the Immigrant and Refugee Loss Center celebration. Julie Lefwich is the director out there, and we all signed a proclamation recognizing the five-year anniversary for her organization. They provide uh, legal advice and support for the immigrant and refugee community in Hamilton County. She does great work. She started at Roberts um, School over in Price Hill. So I was happy to present that on behalf of the commission at the celebration. Um, I think I think we were all at the um, swearing in of Pavan Parikh, our uh, clerk of courts. Um, he's been on the job for a little while, but he had his official swearing in ceremony um, since our last meeting. So I wanna congratulate Pavan on that. And then lastly, I um, attended a meeting in Columbus. It was the County Commissioners Association of Ohio meeting. There were two things that I think are uh, of importance to the board uh, related to that meeting. One was that we had a presentation on House Bill 1, which is uh, was authored by Bob Peterson and Adam Matthews uh, in the, on the House side. House Bill 1 has a tremendous negative effect on county governments and our budgets in addition to having a tremendous negative effect on our levies. And so I, I know that we're gonna be talking about this at our delegation meeting on Monday, but I did wanna um, raise this issue as something that is of great importance to the county. Uh, we stand to lose quite a bit of money uh, if this bill were to go through as it stands now. Um, so I just wanted to put that on the radar. And then um, Lieutenant Governor Husted was there as well, and he took, talked a little bit about jail funding. Uh, we're doing some un unprecedented jail funding in operating budgets in the state of Ohio, which I applaud. However, the formula is such that Hamilton County won't see any of that money unless the formula is changed. And so I uh, brought this to the attention of Lieutenant Governor. He suggested that uh, if we could get uh, different language to him and the GA that we could take a look at creating a formula that is to the advantage of every county in Ohio instead of just some. And so uh, the folks at CCAO are working on that language so that we can benefit from some additional funding from the state to do things like repair locks, repair windows, uh, you know, do some of the basic maintenance over at the Justice Center. So um, just wanted to, again, put these things on the radar. I think we're gonna be talking about them at the delegation meeting on Monday, but did wanna highlight these two things. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a few things. Um, as you talk about public safety, I had mentioned before I'm on the Public Safety Committee for the state, um, CCAO. And as we talk about jail funding, um, that's the only discussion when I was involved in the last meeting is more money for jails. And so I thought when I got on the Public Safety uh, Committee that we would talk about remedying the problem with uh, 
disproportionate uh, African-American males coming to the jail and how we can do things better. But hopefully the discussion will move from not just the safety of the jails and building more jails, but how do we get to a point where we're not focused on just building more institutions for people. Um, I wanted to mention about, um, I did a, um, attend clerical courts, Pavan uh, Parikh swearing in is actually his ceremonial swearing in. He had already been sworn in, but he wanted to include all of us. Um, I also had a meeting this week with the Children's Theater of Cincinnati came here. They're looking at renovating the Emory Theater, which is a beautiful uh, facility, but they have a lot of great programs for children. And as we know, and I mentioned to them about Beyond Your Imagination, an initiative for foster children, adoptive and kinship children, and how we can get some really discounted tickets, uh, hopefully, and involve our children in something that's really cultural that they can be a part of, and they're really excited about it. Um, Hamilton County Prosecutor Melissa Powers came to meet with me, just a meet and greet. Uh, myself and our, my chief of staff to just tell us what her vision mission is and that we can uh, continue to work together. Uh, Mary Hutlinger, uh, the Board of Realtors Alliance, she is the new government relations uh, coordinator. She's been in her position for six months, really excited about working with the county and I talked to her about afford affordable housing and how possibly her entity can be a part of that and connect her to the Port Authority also. And then I attended the One Ohio Region 2 Recovery Foundation Governance Board, which is going to allocate all this money to Hamilton County for drug addiction, recovery, and prevention. And so it was a, a great meeting that we had as we look at how we're going to disperse those monies that are coming down. And I participated, uh, had a meeting with Holly and, and Mark about the ARPA Small Business Grant that will be coming out very soon. It's our fourth round for small businesses. Uh, we have four million dollars for small businesses and they are now looking at the criteria for who can qualify uh, and I'm, I heard they met with all of the commissioners. Uh, any criteria that we might have missed, anything we need to simplify and make it easier for people to actually uh, get some of that money that's coming out. So Keep your ear to the ground. That announcement will be coming very soon. I participated in the Trauma Response Care 101. It was a, a lunch and learn yesterday. Very, very good um, program about trauma and stress and how to deal with it as a worker in your home and, and personally. So hopefully the and the JFS consultants were the ones who um, facilitated that. I met with Steve Johns regarding our ARPA home allocation. Lots of money coming in, uh, additional money for affordable housing. We've committed a lot, but I just cannot wait till we get that home, that Hamilton County home that we built, or we preserved, or that we got in and bought from somebody else. So I, I just want us to be on the fast track as we talk about affordable housing. 40 million, that's awesome, and more millions are coming in but I need to see some of them going up. Um, and then as we talk about our homeless population, hopefully we can get them off the street to some temporary housing, not just a shelter. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I just had a meeting today with the mayor, city manager, Steve Leeper, as, it, as we talk about the convention district and where we're going with that, what, what the county has agreed to, which we haven't agreed to anything yet, but what we may agree to as it relates to the convention uh, center district. So that was an interesting meeting, and you'll be hearing uh, more about that. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, our board has been working. Um, wanted to hit a few things. Uh, today I was a speaker along with uh, Mayor Avtab from the city. I was representing the county at the LISC, Greater Cincinnati, How Greater Cincinnati and Housing, Our Future. And um, over 200 people uh, attended, I'm told. And we had a chance to talk about uh, affordable housing, what we're doing here, uh, what the city is doing here. Doing and just wanted to, one of the things that I ran on, I want to keep in mind, is that when we talk about the county, it's not the city and the county because we, Cincinnati is in, in Hamilton County. I've been a lifetime resident of Cincinnati and a lifetime resident of Hamilton County. Uh, we do have several cities 
villages and townships that make up Hamilton County. So um, we got a chance to look at, which I thought was great, the broader picture of affordable housing. And we got a chance to look at uh, how do we leverage our dollars? And we have an opportunity to change the trajectory, as I said on there, as it relates to affordable housing. So it's not just the phrase, the catchphrase of the day. What we do uh, collectively will determine the future of the entire county. If the county becomes unaffordable to live in, our numbers and population will go down. We will not grow, we will not be futuristic, we will not be standing. So we have to look at how do we leverage this opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity with this ARPA money. Uh, it's the first time that I can ever read that I know of, at least in my lifetime, that we've seen the federal government wanting to bail out the people. Usually it's bailing out an industry, but never a people. We're bailing out the banking industry and they send you down to the bank and then you can't get a loan. We're bailing out the auto industry. We're bailing out, but this time they said, we're gonna bail out the American people. And they gave these dollars to local governments. And it's up to the local government to make sure that the money gets to the people. And I'll tell you that not every county is doing what our county is doing. Uh, we were at the White House and we heard from other counties that have trouble getting the money out, don't know how to move forward. And those dollars, they don't save any money. How it works in Washington is sent to another city, another state, and your money goes somewhere else to help some other people. But what we've done, I think we've been very smart about the money to make sure it gets to the people. And so I get so many um, compliments around the country and other counties about our 513 relief bus. And the bus has helped over 500 people so far. Uh, but we've already had helped 4,000 people prior to that with our body double bus. So we are, um, moving and grooving, um, and I was with the 513 Relief Bus in Avondale this week. I want to thank them. It was a great turnout there with the Avondale uh, Business Center and THP and SOACT and a number of partners along with our bus that comes in with the health benefits. We took a lot of people's blood pressure. I was told one person's blood pressure, they didn't even know it was that high. It was so high they had to hurry up and get them some help. But what if they didn't come to the bus and get their blood pressure checked? So we're doing those kind of things and connecting people to keep the lights on, keep the water bill paid, keep the mortgage going, and keep the rent paid. So um, we're able to talk about that in totality, because when you talk about affordable housing, there's so many other issues. You got to make sure you got enough to buy food. SNAP benefits ended. March the 1st, the additional SNAP benefits affecting thousands of families in Hamilton County. Our board moved very quickly to at least put a stopgap measure in, $2 million to the Free Store Food Bank so they don't run out of food. They're able to call and they can get it delivered right to you. Um, we also have a 211 number, but even with our bus, we also have cash assistance program. So you come, you can talk to somebody directly uh, at the bus. So the bus will be out uh, next week, Colerain Township, I believe College Hill, Walnut Hills. So you can go to 513relief.org to see it, uh, where the next stop is for the bus. But the affordable housing has multiple layers. Mm -hmm. As uh, Commissioner Dumas talked about, we got to get some new housing product out there. Uh, we talked about seniors and reentry and disability, people with disability. Most people I see, they get knee replacements, hip replacements. They can't go up and down them steps like they used to. Do we have the product for them? I was with uh, a senior who has been an advocate. Her rent went up uh, from $300 to $750, but she's on uh, Social Security. She, uh, she gets her retirement. 
Her retirement check is not going up. And she doesn't know where to go. She deserves to be someplace that's safe as well. Been a homeowner, uh, paid her taxes, worked her job, did her time. And so we've got to make sure that when we talk about this affordable housing, there's different layers. Then there's people who work who are not retired. I mean, shoot, it's becoming unaffordable for me, and I'm a county commissioner. It's hard to, it's hard to, you know, Evanston is seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars to move into Evanston, yeah. and so we've got to. There's people working every day, and then we have to be careful with these inspectors. We come in and say, well, of course you want the community to be nice, but you send in the inspectors, and then they go in people's homes, and then they hit them with all these repairs, but no money to help them with the repairs. All this plays into affordable housing. So we were able to hit a lot of those topics. Um, I'm hopeful that as we move forward, we have a ownership model. So when we're long gone, it's not tied to the personalities, but it's tied to the land ownership. And I want us to do the work to make sure that that ownership through maybe it's a community trust or what have you, that you know when we're long gone, they don't get to come in and buy it up and throw you out. Uh, because we have to change where progress only means that the people that live there got to go and new people got to come in because you can't afford it. And we call that progress. So those are the things that we tackled today. It was a great discussion. Um, and I'm very pleased to have shared what our board is doing because we're dealing with a system of 18, since the 1800s and we're trying to change this system in a short amount of time. And uh, I just wanted to highlight that for our board. They were very pleased to know the things that we're doing. We have put up $40 million, that's just from the ARPA money, $5 million to help you stay in the home you already have because that's part of the affordable housing model. And then money for new development, uh, rehab development, and then our HUD dollars that we put in almost $8 million that we've had uh, over the last couple of years that we were stopgap that resulted in over 800 new units. Uh, so we are working on a map. Uh, I think we have it, but we're going to really put more into it so everyone can see the map. Where, just like Commissioner Duman said, where is the money going? Who got it? How did we get it? How many units do we have? And you can see it in real time. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I know we're working on. I'm going to ask at one of our uh, staff meetings that we can present it and show it and how to use it uh, so that everyone can know what we're doing and where we need to improve. I uh, was also happy to uh, chair the One Ohio Region 2 meeting. And uh, Vice President Driehaus was talking about the state. They're trying to keep their hands on the money don't want the money to come down, and uh, we're very familiar with that. Once you give it to the state, they love to hold on to it. So we're fighting to make sure that money comes down. We're ready to go. We're organized. I think we're one of the, uh, thanks to our team here, we are more organized than most, uh, but we're ready to go, and so we'll keep uh, you updated on that. I also had a meeting with um, the city manager, of Cincinnati and the mayor and uh, Mr. Leeper of 3CDC as well about the convention district. And my position uh, is, you know, I look at these things because I'm in that industry, I've been in that industry as the deputy director of tourism and was there to, on the last expansion of convention center. And I had uh, some questions, but what I wanna do is keep this issue out in the open. Everyone should know what's happening. Uh, what is the funding plan? How we're gonna do it? What is your tax money going to it? What is your return on investment? And as a board, we have to look at all obligations. We have a stadium that we would be responsible, paid for by the taxpayer, owned by the taxpayers. It is coming up and it's, five, it's half a billion in yesterday's costs. I don't know what it'll be in future costs. So we have to keep all those things in mind as we're moving forward of the city. They don't have to deal with the stadium. We got to deal with the stadium. Um, and we've got some other projects. My position has been we need the hotel 
and we've been a little short with how we're going to pay for it, how much is it really going to cost, how many rooms are they really going to have, and what will it entail? So I've asked the administrator, I've asked uh, the 3CDC, while they have met with the people behind closed doors, they have talked and negotiated behind closed doors, but I was elected to come from behind the curtain and bring it out in the public. So who, is these, who are these people? I'd like to have them come before us. If they can't come before us, I don't know why would we be doing business with them. <laughs> but come before us and tell us what they're trying to do because to me the hotel is the top priority. The convention center, I'm going to just say this, and I'll have more later, we as a county do not own it. Number two, we're talking about 12,000 square feet of expansion and it's outdoors. That does not get us additional conventions. That's very small. Just think about your house. 12,000 square feet with a $200 million price tag. Uh, Sharonville is expanding and theirs is much larger. When you are a convention, you do not, and I've done this because I've booked a lot of conventions here in Cincinnati and around the state. When you are a convention, you don't come in looking for a pretty building. That's not what you do. You're looking for square footage because you want it to become what your convention is about. You bring in your own carpet, you bring your own staging, you bring your own lighting, you bring your own exhibits. All you want is the square footage. And 12,000 square foot extra does not get us the big conventions. It's, and nor does a pretty building. No one comes and says, oh my God, they got nice glass. I think I'm gonna book the national NAACP convention there. Oh my God, look at it, it's so beautiful. I think I'm gonna bring the national volleyball tournament there. No, you're looking for square footage. So it's nothing personal. That's what the questions that I ask, and when I ask them, it seems to get so tense. And that scares me. You ask a question, how dare you ask me a question? And I'm working hard. And well, people are working hard every day. Working hard. So I think those questions need to be answered. And also, I will be honest, I put something I felt should be on the table. The Convention Center District needs $10 million of our money to get started. And it doesn't include the hotel. And the gun range needs $11 million. I said, well, why don't we just do a wash? The city, you put the TN in for the convention center and give us credit. And we put our TN in and put it toward the gun range to finish it and give us credit. We both have a press conference, and it's a wash. I'm looking at ways how do we leverage everything because we got limited funding. So uh, might not be met with excitement, um, but those are the things that I am looking for. And I told him, I hope we're not doing a take it or leave it situation uh, because all these things are difficult and we have to have ongoing negotiations. So that's what I uh, spent my time in. Want to also say that um, the small business, as we talked about the grants, I'm excited about it. And um, I'm excited about what this board did last week. I mean, we have the first ever uh, uh, disparity, inclusion, real program to help minority businesses to be a part of this. And, you know, it didn't get a lot of publicity, but this was important, what we did. Un it's never been done before. So I want to just thank my colleagues for all their work on this. Um, and I just want to thank, uh, of course, Mr. Bell and the administration. But this was huge, and I'm going to keep talking about it. Uh, even if they're not going to, someone said, well, we don't print it because it doesn't get much clicks when you talk about inclusion and diversity. <laughs> but it matters for our, our, our community. So I want to thank my colleagues. I do have a couple by leaves. Uh, that Yes, yeah, sure. a quick statement, because I, I was talking to the administrator about the disparity study and the impact to the 911 comm center. Mm -hmm. And there is an impact there. This will be our first opportunity to have the disparity study play out 
in one of our projects. So, uh, Madam President, I was hoping we could get a staff meeting to talk about the 911 Comm Center, um, just the, the project in general, since it's kind of coming on board, but also the impact of our new disparity study on the numbers there and what we're hoping to see. Uh, on that site. So I, I just want to offer that for a staff meeting whenever we can get something scheduled, but just as an update. Yeah, we, we will do that. Commissioner Dumas, did you have something? Well, I was just thinking about what we were just saying about our first opportunity to look at the diversity and inclusion study, but um, we had opportunities so many times before, but we're forcing the issue now. And so we have to do it now, so better late than, that, than never. But um, yeah, I'm just really excited about the whole opportunity to include um, diversity in this major project. And there are a lot of other major projects that are coming forth. And we'll do the same thing. Awesome. OK, sounds good. Uh, we have a couple by leaves uh, I'd like to advance as soon as I get my sheet here. Uh, we got a couple uh, appointments. And just want to tell people to keep applying we got a lot of board appointments we're looking for good people and um, so we wanted to do that by leave number one these are board appointments to the Ohio Regional Transit Authority uh, by leave number one is to uh, appoint Kaza Kasava Smith KZ Smith <laughs> uh, by leave number two is to appoint Anthony Bryce jr. By, um, uh, by leave number three is Jay Beatty. 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 Mm -hmm. By leave number four is Sanja Taylor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve item by leaves one through four. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Right, thank you. That's all my by leaves. I'll turn it over. Uh, Mr. Aludo, do you have any comments or by leaves? Commissioners, no comments or by leaves today. Wow. <laughs> wow. What? I don't know if I should say wow or what's going on here. No. <laughs> okay, we'll go to the uh, agenda. Item number, let's see, items one through five. We've got our engineer. He's back. Good Mr. afternoon. Beck, how are Glad you? Glad to be here. Um, five items today. Item number one is a resolution. Uh, authorizing a joint agreement between Delhi Township and the county for um, OP, the OPWC funds for the stabilization and improvements to Hillside Road. Um, this was actually good news. We have uh, worked with Delhi Township. The project cost is about three and a half million dollars. Working with Delhi Township, we were able to get an OPWC grant for seventy percent of the cost, which is about two and a half million dollars. Um, subsequent to that, the county engineer's office went out and applied for more grant funding for the local portion of that, the additional 30%, and we were able to obtain funds for that. So it looks like this entire project should be able to be funded with OPWC uh, grants and SORTA grants. So this is the agreement with Delhi Township to, to allow us to work with them for the OPWC portion. Items two through four, two through five, are all appropriations allowing um, this. This is to allow the prosecutor to start the uh, work for appropriations on these parcels if needed for the Fields Hurdle Road improvements. Item two is parcel twenty two, um, the fair fair market value and offer amounted to forty eight hundred and sixty eight dollars. Item three was parcel number twenty three which was $1,962. Item four was 20, parcel 28, $911. And number five was parcel 40 for $3,913. Uh, these will all come out of permissive auto funds. This allows these to start the process for appropriation if needed. We will continue to negotiate in good faith, but this will allow the process to get started um, if it needs to actually go to court. We had a town, didn't we, not a town hall, we had a... Uh, we, had, we had a public hearing, public hearing. on November 17th um, for the appropriation, which allowed us to do the appropriations, and this is setting up the ones that we haven't agreed with yet. We couldn't reach agreement allowing us to go to the actual appropriation. Okay. 
Uh, Vice President Driehaus, any questions? I have no questions. I just could work on the Delhi Township piece. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Dumas. Just one question on item one. I was wondering why we didn't put zero for item one since the whole because is funded. This agreement is just for the OPWC portion with Delhi Township. Okay. So you were saying 70% of the cost was covered. Then you got another grant for 30% right. of the cost. Yeah. And so, that'll all be covered when we actually bring the project to bid. We'll put all that breakdown. This is just currently the agreement with Delhi Township on the OPWC portion, which was a 70% OPWC and a 30% local. Okay. Thanks. I make a motion to approve items one through five. Second. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number six is a resolution. And uh, Administrator Luda, you want to update us on it? Thank you, Madam President. So, this uh, item relates to a substance abuse and mental health grant that we received uh, for our drug court operations. I believe uh, Assistant Administrator Webb, and I can't see over there. I don't know whether Ms. Guthrie is there as well, but it's just Ms. Webb today. So, uh, Lisa's going to walk us through the, the grant. You'll remember a few months back where you started receiving a lot of different grant funding uh, for some of our substance abuse work. So, this is one of those, so, uh, and, and a contract related to them. Lisa? This is the first of what will hopefully be several coming in the next few weeks. Um, this is for the Drug Treatment and Recovery Court. It is the first subrecipient agreement on the grants that they received. Um, they received two grants, $2 million from SAMHSA and $700,000 from BJA, Bureau of Justice Assistance. Uh, this is a part of the SAMHSA grant of that $2 million. This is uh, $2 million over five years. This is $65,000 annually. This is with one city for recovery, and it will expand the use of peer recovery supports through the hiring of two part-time court navigators or peer recovery coaches to offer recovery support services and community-based services for individuals going through the drug treatment and recovery court. Great. Uh, any questions? No questions. I have one question. Go to the administrator. Um, it's a little confusing for me as if I was just a resident and I'm reading number six because there is no indication that it's a grant. Now, last time we had a meeting um, and there was something for the coroner and it was 300 and I think about the same amount. And then John came in and said, oh, that's a grant. But if you look at it, you'll wonder whether or not that's coming out of our general budget or where it's coming from. So I think we need to be clear as we have these things on our agenda for whoever's reading it that it's a grant. Because I would uh, assume that it was coming out of another funding um, source. Uh, Madam President, yes. uh, Commissioner Summer Dumas, yes. So we can uh, talk about how we're more specific in that. In this particular one, the and I realized to someone looking at home, they might not pick up on this, but the term subrecipient agreement mm -hmm. uh, is a, a typical federal grant term that when you get a federal grant, you you enter into a subrecipient agreement. So it's kind of in, in inferred there, but someone want, someone looking at this from home isn't going to see that. So we can talk about how we just make it more specific that there's because I'm there. I was going to bring it up later when we look at consent items. It's just it's just too confusing if we don't add that one word on grant. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. That's it. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to adopt item number six. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Oduma? Yes. Thank you. And uh, you, this information also Judge Sanders will receive as well. Okay. Because I know she had some concern about we got approved for the grants, where they are, let's get get it moving. All of the grant funding is already appropriated. Now that you've approved it, that contract will be entered into and one city will be able to do their work. Awesome. Thank you. And as I said, there'll be several more coming specifically through drug court. Those were the first um, contracts that we are working on. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, we go to our consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Aluto, you want to walk us through? Thank, and thank you, Madam President, certainly. And uh, just uh, on that same topic of fund, uh, I'll talk with um, uh, with staff and with the clerk as well about whether we might be able to do something uh, because um, Commissioner Summer Dumas brought up grants, but there are, as the board knows, other funding sources as well, aside from just the general fund. Yes. Um, and there might be some uh, some way to accurately delineate source of funding in, in the item as well. So we can look at that also. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great idea. 
Um, so on the consent agenda, item number seven, this is an amended project management agreement. Uh, $379,000 with Skanska to align with our expanded uh, schedule for the uh, Finley Market Garage. Uh, item number eight is our annual agreement with the state auditor at $240,000 for conduct of the 2022 uh, financial audit with the state. Uh, item number nine is our biannual um, uh, uh, engagement letter with outside counsel related to the Metropolitan Sewer District with uh, Voriceator Seymour and Pease at 1.15 million. That's the same amount in the budget as the last biannual agreement. Uh, we have a then and now with uh, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office uh, and the state of Ohio for 81,000. This is uh, essentially uh, funding criminal investigation work, uh, BCI background checks at the uh, that the sheriff is is required to do. Um, we just had not appropriated the funding for that, so we have to go back and appropriate the funding and do a then and now resolution for that. Uh, we have a Ford F550 on behalf of the Hamilton County engineer, one of those at 65,860. Uh, we have the fourth year of a five-year painting project for the high steel at Great American Ballpark. Uh, awarding an ITB uh, to Rizzo Brothers Painting at 819,000. Uh, we have a grant to the city of Wyoming from the Hamilton County Solid Waste District uh, for $8,974. This is for a food waste drop-off pilot program. Uh, we have multiple job and family services um, uh, resolutions, commissioners. Um, I know that Laura Wolf is, I uh, believe, on the uh, on the the uh, the virtual meeting, but uh, just to I'll walk through these, but there are multiple of them, and a lot of them relate to you. Uh, the board was aware that once a year we do agreements between job and family services and multiple uh, county agencies that help with the administration of child support of the child support enforcement program, in particular uh, Title Four D um, child support enforcement program. Uh, so I'll. You, you'll hear a lot of those um, as I walk through this. So the first is actually a group home uh, uh, project or a group home uh, agreement with uh, Julia Page Family Center at 126,000. Uh, you have item number 15, which is uh, uh, relates to the child support 4D program. This is uh, with the domestic relations court uh, for uh, child support orders. Uh, we have the four, a 4D agreement between uh, JFS and the clerk of courts for filing of those 4D cases. Uh, we have uh, an agreement with the Hamilton County prosecuting attorney related to uh, cases related to uh, non-support uh, in the instance of uh, 4D, uh, for, for 4D criminal non-support cases. We have uh, an, another agreement with the Hamilton County prosecutor related to uh, services in the prosecutor's office related to elderly protection. Uh, we have uh, a number 19 is a, an agreement between job and family services and juvenile court related to hearings to establish paternity uh, and child support orders. Uh, we have an agreement with an item number 20, agreement with the sheriff to serve uh, child support 4D warrants. Um, we have item number 21, which is not a 4D item, uh, but is a, an item uh, with JFS. This is a workforce grant with the state uh, to help individuals with non-occupational illnesses return to work. Uh, we have a, an item number 22, which is a group home agreement with Nella's Place, uh, with Step, step Higher uh, Nella's Place. Uh, we have a residential treatment agreement is number 23. Uh, with Hiddle House uh, with Job and Family Services. Item number 24 is a agreement uh, with Beach Acres for Parent Education Services. And item number five is an agreement with the Family Nurturing Center for Parent Education Services. If there's any uh, questions about those specific JFS items, I believe that Laura Wolf is on the line who can walk through the specific details of them, Commissioner. Uh, any questions regarding that? No questions. Questions on that yeah. area? Yeah. yeah, I do. Commissioner Dewis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a couple questions. Items 16 through 20 are all prosecutor initiated um, items, warrants, paternity, support cases. Uh, one is, of course, the senior um, services. 
My question is, all that money, it's lots of money, comes out of the court system budget? Is that where all that money is coming from? So uh, specifically, um, items number 17 and 18 are related uh, to the prosecutor's office. Um, 16 is the, is the clerk of courts, 19 is juvenile court, 20 is the sheriff's office. Um, but these are agreements, these are dollars from JFS to these individual agencies to compensate for the administration of, of 4D child support cases. So all the ones that have Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office, um, it's all coming from JFS is what you're saying. Yes, those are agreements with between the, pro the uh, again, specific 17 and 18, those are the prosecuting attorney um, uh, resolution specifically. Those are agreements between JFS and the prosecutor's office to support those specific services that re relate to, um, I'm sorry, Claire? Uh, Lauren Wolf is on the line and she's, she can speak and address these. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, Commissioner Dumas, yes. The, the ones with the child support, yes. those are all federally funded from for, for those programs. So the prosecutor's office for the child support criminal cases um, we provide the match with local funds, but the, the primary funder is federal for that one. Okay. Um, we're also using federal funds for the agreement with the prosecutor's office for their support with us for the um, adult protective services and also to help because um, often they are going to court to help address personal matters with the protection of the elderly mm -hmm. and for our people that are staying in um, long-term Medicaid facilities. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. One, one additional comment in general. I think it's been about a year. Um, I mentioned about uh, as we're giving out money for the pandemic, uh, the young men and women that are trying very hard to pay their child support, but have been impacted by the pandemic and they cannot pay their rent or their electricity. And we had said almost a year ago that we were going to, we can't pay the child support. I found that out about a year ago, but we were going, going to try to supplement those people that have been good stewards and are really trying to provide child support um, payment, but maybe their job laid them off or whatever. And so where are we on that, uh, Jeff? Yeah, so I think um, uh, Director Patton may have spoken to this a couple of, maybe a month or so ago, uh, that we are working between JFS and reentry uh, to specifically to try to identify individuals who are having issues mm -hmm. with uh, child with child support to connect them into other programs that we have, whether they're through the state uh, or whether they're uh, utility rental assistance programs, that type of thing. So we can do a specific staff meeting update for that, Commissioner, if you'd like, just to talk about how we're we're advancing that particular work. Yeah, it's been so long, um, and people are suffering as we speak. Um, and I think about uh, the young men as women also that are so frustrated. We don't want them to, even if they had issues with um, some incarceration in the past or whatever, so being so desperate to help them along the way, I don't understand uh, why it's taken so long. I don't I just don't understand. So we are, we are working on making those connections, but we can, we can do a, a staff meeting discussion of it so, to let you know where we are with it specifically and how it's working, that type of thing. I think in the courts should have a printout of those that are behind, um, the people that are behind on their child support and where they've, I mean, and we, okay. So we'll have him come in and hopefully we'll get this started before the summer, uh, cause I'm sure there are people that are suffering. So, and you know, so thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, and, and then you gonna go with 26 through? No. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I thought we, I, I, I did not note that those were not the by leaves that you had already hit on, Madam President. So yes, so, uh, we have uh, items 26 through 30. Um, these are official bonds and oaths of office uh, for uh, specific uh, agencies that are appointed by uh, probate court. So you've got official uh, number 26 through, uh, let's see, through 28 relate to appointments to the Hamilton County Park Board. Uh, William Burwinkle, Douglas Adams, Melissa Wegman is appointed by probate court. 29 and 30 um, are appointments to the Developmental Disability Services Board, Michael Odioso and Teresa Hell, uh, Helly. Um, 
those are 29 and 30. So the probate court makes these specific appointments. Um, as the board is aware, um, some of the board does make appointments to some of these boards like DDS, um, uh, but under the park board, uh, these are all probate court appointments. All of these, 26 through 30, just to be clear, are appointments of the probate court. They're coming to the board just as the um, organization of record for the county to show that the probate court has made that appointment. You are not officially and formally making these appointments, but they've been made by probate court. Thank you. Yeah, I asked that question. I don't, it just is, do we have to vote on these in, in well, I think, the law? I think I just, I, it just seems so weird because we... People, other people make decisions, and then all we do is, I don't know if that's how the government was set up years ago, but why would we just be like, okay, rubber stamp people we don't even know, and then they hit us with the record show we voted on them. Well, and I'll, I'll and I'm not saying anything to these people. I don't know sure, them sure. personally, but even just like with the, you know, great parks, nothing against it, but they get to, they can put something on the ballot and raise taxes, and, and then people come to us and say, y'all did it. So I'm just trying to figure out, does this say in the ORC we have to do something? I think you're essentially journalizing this for the record. I'll defer yeah, to I mean, I can't speak to specific provisions of the revised code that may address this. I don't know off the top of my head. I couldn't tell you. But my understanding is that you're journalizing for these entities that the probate court is appointing. You are not appointing them. Can they, we they use your microphone, Mike? Oh, so, yeah. People, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, I could get you something more official, but off the top of my head, yes. It's just you're entering the, the record of the county here in the probate court, and these boards specifically are county entities. I don't know that they have their own record that they would maintain this, and I can't speak to whether or not the revised code requires it, but that has been the practice here. So we have no problem with it and would advise doing so, but if you want us to look at it, we certainly can. I would. I'm uncomfortable voting for things that I'm, I'm not in charge of. And then it comes back and says, I voted for it. That's so I would like to know what it is. I don't know that there's any specific timing uh, issue with this from an urgency. Yeah. Uh, if, if the board as a whole wants to hold it, I, uh, uh, Leslie, unless you've heard anything specific from probate court about the need for these to be journalized this week, um, we could hold it. Um, I prefer to hold it. I mean, it's already it, happening. It, it, they a, don't a, even a, need us. In, in time for a review by the prosecutor's office, I was saying. So do you want to wait a week, or do you want to just receive these for the record? I mean, it's... I think that's what, essentially what they're doing anyway, is journalizing these. To um, put as the record. Oh, we're just receiving it for the record? Pretty much, yeah. There's this no, says consent Do we have agenda. to vote on this, Michael? Yeah, I mean, you're voting in the approving the items. I, I couldn't tell you looking at the resolution, but I imagine that they're receiving for the record. Right. If, you, if the board would want to hold this we in hold order to get clarity it, on this So I get some clarity. I, I, if, if my colleagues wouldn't mind, could I just hold it for a week so I can get some clarity? In my understanding, these are appointments of the probate court. Okay. Yes, yeah, you can. Enter. Yeah, I would like to um, let me get these other ones out the way that we have to vote on first. And if we could wait a week, wait a week and just have the proper wording because it says, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of says consent agenda. Um, so I would like to make a motion to approve items seven through twenty five. Uh, we already voted on six in, independently. Right. Okay. Um, I will second. So you said through 25? Yeah, seven through 25 right now. Okay. Second. I was wondering if he was, uh, I was wondering if John was saying something about the. No, only that uh, in our conversation with probate court, it's their belief that we're just receiving these for the record as well. But if I don't, he also said that there wasn't any urgency to doing it this week. So if the board would like. Just to measure twice and cut once yeah. on this, we can just do it. If you don't mind, I, we can put it back on next week since mm -hmm. we just, you know. Uh, so item 7 through 25, as motion has been presented, has been second. Uh, Madam Clerk. Commissioner um, Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samaro Dumas? Yes. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Uh, 
So um, can do we need a motion for items 26 through 30 to hold them for one week? I think do that I? would probably be the best. Okay. Way. I'll make a motion items 26 through 30 to be held for one week. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. I now make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Now the favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing?